welcome to chapter 3 in our series. The first two chapters handled player movement and the level design. Now we're going to start looking into actual game mechanics. Now the first game mechanic we're going to work on, which is the subject of this chapter, is doors and keys for those doors. So in our maze we'll have a door that impedes the player's progress towards their goal. In this first part we're going to create a new actor for our door and import a door mesh uh, to be used inside our game. So let's get started. First of all we're going to go into our meshes folder and we're going to import a new mesh here. And I'm going to choose my door mesh and click open. And finally click import on the import options window. We can disregard the warning messages and everything else is fine. The material that it comes with we don't need because we'll be replacing it with our own one momentarily so we can delete the materials in our meshes folder. With our door mesh, open it up. And in here we can choose what material you want it to use. Now there's two materials available to you. One is going to handle the wall and one's going to handle these skulls at the top here. So we can choose the wall material that we made prior to this as our main wall. And then for our skull, we can choose the gold material that we've been using as well. Just so it makes it stand out a little bit more. Click save and we can close that. So now we've got this mesh, we can now start work on our actor. So I'm going to go back to my root folder here and I'm going to create a new folder. And this folder is called blueprints. And I'm going to choose a color for this one. New color. And this could be a more darker blue. Go to add new blueprint class. And we're going to choose an actor. This is because the door is not a playable character or can it be set possessed by the player itself. So here I'm going to call this door and leave it as such. Open up your door blueprint. And in here we can start adding components in our component list here on the left. Click on add a component and choose static mesh. I'm going to name this mesh door mesh. On the right hand side with it selected still we should be able to choose what static mesh we choose to show in our component. From the drop down find your door mesh and it will appear in your viewport. Now I like to make my stuff always facing X so I'm going to rotate this round and turn it round to face the X axis. So it's a good idea to have things facing your X axis. You can tell it's facing the x-axis because if we change our uh, look at our gizmo here, we can see the x-axis is pointing this way, which should line up with which way the door is facing. The door is going to have also a box collision on it. And the box collision would be the trigger volume. In the component list, you can see a hierarchy forming. So door mesh belongs to default scene root and the trigger volume currently is set to it belonging to a door mesh. I do not want that to be the case. I want there to be two separate things. So drag your trigger volume onto your door mesh and it will detach it from that. So now it is independent from your door. You want to rotor, uh, move it and scale it so that it covers both sides of your door either way. This is going to be the field that the players need to be in in order to open the door. Lastly, we're going to need a scene component to indicate where the key will go. So add component scene and choose a scene component. This scene component is simply just a location. That's all it is. So I'm going to call this one keyhole. And this is actually going to belong to the door mesh because it's going to be attached to the door. So drag your keyhole component out from where it currently is and drop it onto door mesh. And you want it so it's indented in like it is here to indicate that it is a child of the door mesh. So when a door mesh moves, the keyhole moves. With your keyhole selected, you want to move it up into the hole. And this is where the key will spawn when we choose to do that later on. And that's it for the door actor. We can click compile and close that down. 
Now choose a location to, chew, uh, to place your door. Now for testing purposes, I recommend placing the door near the start. We can always remove this later on, as we just want to test it to make sure things are working correctly. So I'm going to put that there and move it over slightly like so. So now I have this door. The door doesn't animate or doesn't move yet because we have not yet coded anything for it to tell it to do so. What we will be doing is adding a key. So we can pick up a key, drop it into the hole, causing the door to open. And that's what we'll work, start working on in the next part. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in part two. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.